Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're going to be talking about a new mod chip that's now available for the Nintendo GameCube, which is known as PicoBoot. So this is a, a open source project that was recently released by WebHDX, and it's an IPL style of mod chip for the Nintendo GameCube. So that means it's very similar to these older mod chips like the Cube or the Viper GC that were made around the mid uh, 2000s, early 2000s. These things are not uh, easy to get anymore. They haven't been made for a really long time. And so it's got a lot of features that really, you know, make it quite superior to the dominant mod chip that's available nowadays, which is the Xeno GC. So today what I have here is a uh, DAL 001 and a DAL 101, so both hardware revisions of the GameCube. So I'm going to install two of these, and I'll show you how to do the installation in both types of GameCubes. And then afterwards, I'll go over some of the features of this new mod chip and, uh, you know, just demonstrate how really cool it is and also relatively inexpensive to get the parts uh, needed to do this. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so before I get started with the hardware, I first wanted to get the software set up and configured properly. So what that requires is first to get the SD to SB2 uh, little board here taken care of. So that's where your micro SD card is going to go, and that's going to contain your homebrew and uh, potentially your ISOs if you're going to be playing games directly off the SD to SP2. So I have a micro SD card inserted into the computer. It's formatted to FAT32, and I've basically placed three things in here. So I just grabbed a copy of my game, one of my games, which is Mario Sunshine, threw it in here. I also have um, the latest revision of Swiss, which I'll have a link in the description for. So you take out the uh, swiss.doll file from that package and just rename it to ipl.doll and place it in the root of your SD card, which is what you see here. I also have a second piece of homebrew, and this is the um, NES emulator FCEUGX, which is compatible with the GameCube. So one of the nice features of the Pico Boot is that you can boot potentially up to three different types of homebrew by holding down buttons. So I've renamed this one to B.doll, and so if I hold down the B button at boot, I'll boot up this NES emulator. So pretty cool. So all of that's in the root directory, and I'm all set with that. So now the next thing I need to do is get the Pico Boot itself ready. And so that's also super easy. All you've got to do is connect it via micro USB, hold down this little programming button right here, and then plug it into a USB port. And now it should show up as like an external drive. And there it is right here. So now all I've got to do is take this picoboot.uf2 file. This came directly from uh, the releases page. And again, I'll have a link in the description for this. And you just drag it into the root directory of the picoboot. All right, so the pico is ready and we're actually good to go. So now let's go ahead and get back to the hardware. Okay, so we're going to just briefly go over taking apart a GameCube. It's very simple, and all you really need is a Phillips screwdriver and a GameGit screwdriver, just like this one right here. So first thing you've got to do is take the four GameBit screws out of the bottom of the shell, and they look like this. Then the top shell will just come right off, and from here, you'll have these Phillips screws all around the periphery of the console. So you just got to use your screwdriver, take those all out. There's also going to be four of these thin, long screws that are going to be right here over the controller ports. You may need a different size bit to take those out. Once all that stuff is out of the way, the fan and the power switch should get out of the way. You can take the laser, lift it up, and remove it. And now we've got our motherboard here. And so at this point, there's going to be six of these smaller screws that hold the heatsink in place. And now the next step is really just to remove the heatsink itself. And this can be actually a little bit tricky. I mean, you can just physically lift it up and, you know, that's fine. But there is some risk to that. So on the DAL001 in particular, I believe there's a couple of transistors that are right over here. And I've actually pulled those off um, just by lifting up the heatsink. So I've learned my lesson. I was able to reattach them. It didn't do any permanent damage. But ever since then, I've been cautious about removing the heatsink. And so what I'll do is I'll come onto the edge and I'll just kind of lift up like so. And usually that results in a very clean pull, which is what you see here. I have the thermal pads all intact. Uh, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the thermal pads break. 
not a big deal. You can always get new thermal pads if you need to. Um, but yeah, you can see here's those, those little components. I guess they're diode arrays, actually. They're all right over here. And these have lifted for me in the past, so I've always been very careful. And I always lift on this side where the fins of the heatsink are thicker. Okay, so we're just about done. I'm just going to pull out the controller pads and just lift because there's a power supply PCB right here. And now our motherboard is free. Okay, so now we're ready to install a few wires that are going to connect the GameCube motherboard to the Pico Boot. So it's only five wires, and it's actually very similar to the installations that you would do for a Viper GC or a Cube. So we're going to be soldering five wires on here. It's going to be two here, uh, one on the ground, and then two on this chip right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just do it, and then I'll talk about where everything connects up momentarily. Okay, so we're all set, and I'm just going to describe where all of these wires are going to be going to. So over here, we have ground, and we're actually bridging these two pins together, and then also connecting a wire, and this is going to go to the ground on the Pico boot. Over here, we have this one wire going here on this leg of this chip. This is going to go to GP6 and 7 on the Pico. Over here, we've got GP4 on the Pico, and then these two pins right here, this is going to go to GP5, and then this is going to go to 3V3, respectively. Um, I'll also put a link in the description to the official install documents because there's a nice photograph depicting this over there as well. All right, so we're basically done over here, so all I'm going to do now is just get a little bit of heat and shrink tubing and use it to just kind of manage and route the wires, and we're going to go ahead and reassemble this one. Okay, so now we have the DAL 101 motherboard, and so it is quite different. Um, for one, the uh, there's a lot of the power stuff is not on a separate PCB. It's actually built onto the motherboard itself. It doesn't have the digital port. It just has composite video right here. And the solder points are very similar, but the locations are different. So we're still going to be soldering right over here. Uh, so the ground is going to go there, and also the GP5 and 3V3. So it's going to go here and here, respectively. And the other chip uh, in question that's on the top side is actually on the bottom side here. So we're gonna do um, GP4 and GP6 and 7 over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder all those points and then I'll show you guys how it all looks in the end. So all the wiring is finished over here, and so I'll just show you where everything is connected. So just like before, we are going to take these two pins and connect them with some solder, and then also add in a wire, and this is our ground right over here. So uh, right over here, this red wire is going to be our 3v3, and this is our GP5. This is exactly the same as it is on the 100, I believe. And now if we flip over the board, uh, we've got our... Uh, GP4 located right here, and GP6 and 7 located right here. So this connection is the same, it's just that this chip happens to be on the underside of the motherboard in this case. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and route all these wires, and let's get back to the reassembly and the continuing of the installation. Okay, so I'm working on reassembling the DAL001 GameCube. And so you can see I've got the heat shrink wrap right here, and it just holds everything in place. I'm going to take the disk drive and bring it in like so. And then the wires are going to route through this little corner right here in the RF shield. There's enough space for them to sneak by. Um, maybe I might have to just like clip off a little bit of this. In fact, I think I'm going to do that just out of precaution. Okay, so that little piece of RF shield is gone, and that makes it really easy now <clears throat> for these wires to come up and out. All right, so I'm going to continue reassembling, and I'll be back in a second.
Okay, I would want to just stop really quickly here just to tell you that when you're rebuilding the GameCube, make sure you put these three screws in first and then this one here in the back because the power switch and the fan, they obstruct those areas. So those always have to go in first. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and continue and then we will be back in a second. Okay, so the GameCube is mostly reassembled and then I just cut my wires so that they could go the full length of <clears throat> this region right here because the Pico is going to sit right about here with some double-sided tape. So the last thing we need to do is just solder these five wires to the Pico. So that's also not that difficult. The back of the Pico has each one of these <clears throat> pads labeled. So all I need to do now is just match up these wires to the corresponding pads. Okay, so the Pico boot is wired up and now you can see how it's finally assembled. So off camera, I took a little piece of uh, zip tie and used that just to hold all of the wires in place. It just kind of keeps everything neat and clean. And then let me just show you how it's all wired up. So you can see over here, this is the ground wire and this one here is the 3V3, go into this pad right here. And then here are my GP pads. So this is four, five, there's an empty space in between and then this purple wire is six and seven and they're bridged together. So I used a piece of double-sided tape. It's rated for 15 pounds of weight. So, you know, this should be no problem for the small little Pico. And now everything is all set. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish closing this thing up. One final thing, which is really important to mention is just closing up the shell. So you don't wanna actually just literally put this down. The reason why is that Right over here at the top of the GameCube, there's this little switch right here. When this switch is opened or, or up, it tells the GameCube whether the lid is open or closed. So if you make the mistake of just taking the top and putting it down like this, it's actually very easy to crush and destroy those switches. And then the GameCube won't know if the lid is open or closed. So I always do this where the lid is open and then I close. And that always is the safest way to do it without damaging anything. Okay, so now we're all set. Let's go ahead and power this thing on and see what it can do. Okay, so both game cubes are finished up. Here's the doll 001, here's the doll 101. And I left this one open so you could see that the assembly was basically exactly the same. All you've gotta do is just connect these wires up to the correct points, the exact same points on the Pico and you're all set. The only difference with the doll 001 and the 101 is that with the 101, you have to use this device here, which is called an SD Gecko. It's basically a memory card to SD adapter and you load up the SD card exactly the same way as I showed you with the SD to SP2 and you just plug it in and it works. So let me go ahead and power this thing on and demonstrate how everything functions. So you can see it boots immediately into Swiss. And I believe if there's a DVD, if there's a game in the drive, it'll detect that and load that as well. And uh, so yeah, now it works exactly like the normal Swiss interface. You can go ahead and load a game. So I'll just load up Mario Sunshine right here. This is just my example game. And uh, it works perfectly. I would say the only exception uh, to this is there are a few games that use audio streaming like Star Fox Adventures, for example. And I think those games don't work perfectly. I think they do have some issues, but it's a very small number of games. So we're talking about, you know, 95% compatibility with this method. So it's really nice. Um, as you can see, Mario Sunshine is running exactly as though we had a real disc in the drive. What's also great about this mod chip is that, of course, you can boot games from the SD card, but you can still play your original media as well. All right, so now let me demonstrate one other thing. 
So if you guys remember from earlier, I had also included another uh, executable file. So <clears throat> with the Pika boot, you can load up to three different uh, homebrew files uh, in addition to Swiss. So um, you name them as either b.doll, x.doll, or y.doll. And then you just need to hold down uh, the respective button and you'll boot that homebrew. So I have that NES emulator and I named it b.doll. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and hold down B, power it on. And now here's that uh, NES emulator that I was talking about. So if I had games on that SD card, I could play uh, NES games uh, using this method directly. I mean, it's really convenient for things like the uh, Game Boy interface program, which um, allows you to control um, the, the Game Boy uh, player accessory. Uh, that is really amazing. If you, if you, you know, can definitely try to buy one of those and add it to your GameCube as well. So overall, I would say this is like a really outstanding mod chip. I think it's the best thing out there at the moment. What's really cool also is that this thing is open source. Um, it's really cheap. You just need to buy the Pico and either an SD Gecko or an SD to SB2. And all of that maybe is like, you know, 20 bucks tops more or less. So yeah, I think it's a, a really great option uh, for the GameCube and something I highly recommend. All right, guys, so that's it for this week's video. Um, if you like this kind of content, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out every week, usually on Fridays. And um, I also have a website, oneuprestorations.com. If you guys have any consoles that you need repaired or modified, you can contact me there and I can try to help you out. All right, thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.